Empire Metals has shared more details about the titanium dioxide mineral deposit discovered at its Pitfield project in Western Australia. I'm delighted to be joined by the managing director, Sean Bunn. So, Sean, we first discussed this discovery, you and I, in March. You've now revealed that the deposit comprises rutile and anatase, which are near surface. What do they add to the project economics? Yeah, well, thanks for uh, the interview, Sarah. I really appreciate this. So we've got, um, yeah, we've announced this new discovery and uh, it, it it certainly has set us back a little bit. It's got us you know, really thinking. It's a very exciting uh, new development. Basically, you know, what we found is these really high valuable no, titanium dioxide, natural titanium dioxide minerals. So uh, basically there are three rutile anatase and a, and a, a rather you know, rare mineral called brookite. Um, so we've, we've definitely identified both the rutile and the anatase within the, you know, the upper weathered part of this system. Um, and, and why is that important? Well, these minerals are generally naturally nearly not nearly 100% titanium dioxide they're, they're generally in situ grades uh, you know better than 95 percent um depending on what sort of impurities they might carry uh what's important to realize is that these are incredibly high demand these are the sort of minerals that go into the high end of the titanium industry uh you know they use for you know the, the chloride pigment industry they use for making titanium metals they use for uh, you know, welding rods, which is the very high end, high value end of this uh, this particular market. And, you know, what's also really encouraging is that, you know, these commodities, large deposits of this type of mineral uh, are, are becoming, you know, they're scarce. They're becoming harder and harder to find. So you've got a, you've got this sort of situation where we have now found a, uh, you know, a, a very substantial uh, deposit of these minerals sitting right at surface in uh, in the weathered cap, and uh, yeah, we we think it's fantastic. So higher grades, higher value, scarce. When you have more data, how are you going to use that data? Is it are you going to use it to attract a joint venture partner, or are you wanting? to go alone on the Pitstone project, bearing in mind you have this huge discovery? Well, we don't need a partner at the moment. So uh, I think from a technical point of view, uh, you know, we're not, we're, we're quite comfortable in our own skin, if you like. We, we're quite capable of taking this project through the, you know, through the metallurgical testing, the processes, the understanding of the geology, the mineralogy. Uh, we've, we've sort of, We've collaborated now with the, you know, with the Commonwealth Scientific uh, Industry Research Organization. That's the CSIRO, which is a, a federal government body uh, with scientists that have worked on titanium before. Uh, we're commencing work with them in the uh, in the next few weeks. Working with Curtin University, which is a a, a, a more technical university here in Perth, in Australia, uh, who have a, a you know, part of the West Australian School of Mines, which is, uh, you know, world-class mining, you know, geological mining and, and metallurgical uh, institution. So we are, you know, very well supported at the moment, and we are very comfortable that we will work our way through some of these technical challenges. Okay, so you have some uh, in, in enormous partnership potential, even if it's the, the young genius brains from the academic institutions. But the update says the discovery will have a material and immediate positive impact on the overall project economics. So first, immediate. What does that mean? Is it immediate in terms of credibility? Well, it probably doesn't shift the, 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 the sort of questions and credibility factor. I mean, we've been building that up steadily over time. We've we've let the science, you know, we've let the science do the, the talking for us. We've drilled, you know, over 107 drill holes into the ore body and never once have we not hit mineralization. So people have got the sense of giant scale. People have now realized that the grade is almost continuous and it's a high grade, you know, seven to ten times 
higher value in situ than a typical mineral sand. But more importantly, I think what we have to focus on here is why would it accelerate our thoughts and activities? Well, well firstly, uh, you know, rutile anatase, these titanium dioxide minerals, don't require a lot of downstream beneficiation. Once you separate them in a mineral separation sense, you've almost got the product that you were seeking. And you know, we have you know, obviously ambitions to go further and refine some of these, uh, these minerals. But it does speed things up and it does allow us the opportunity to, you know, to develop a, a sort of uh, an early phase of the project, focusing on this top, you know, weathered zone or, you know, sitting above the big bedrock deposit. So we focus on that. It's going to be low cost mining. The material is, is basically clays and saprolites and, and soils uh, into some transitional material, easy to mine high grade, doesn't require a lot of downstream processing once you extract the mineral. So we really do see a, an opportunity within this, you know, this massive opportunity that the whole project represents. Um, and, and we're looking forward to being able to come back to the market with more information on that. Okay, so Mother Nature Weathering has done most of the ex near surface excavation for you, but obviously there will be costs which numbers can you share with us as you work out the capex for a fully integrated single site based mining processing and refining operation if that's still the ambition definitely our ambition so if you said where do we want to take this so let's think about what what differentiates us you now what how, how are we different from the rest of the pack clearly not a mineral sand you know uh, clearly, we don't want to be a constant, make, make a, a, a low grade or poor concentrate and, and sell it to the, you know, to the, the pigment consumers who, who, you know, don't generally pay an awful premium for it. We see us being uh, producing a product that is close to being, you know, a rutile equivalent. And now we found you know, rutile. So, you know, we took one big jump, thanks to Mother Nature, and bypassed a you know, probably a, a, an entire years of, of you know, worth of, of met, you know, metallurgical study. So we are still focused on mineral processing. We're still focused on a processing route because we want to get to the tie tonight. We see that as a, a, a massive opportunity for us to fully integrate our processes and become a, you know, a, a, you know, a, a pigment producer, if, if that's possible. You know, we, we want to aspire to be, as we say, a fully integrated mine to product uh, at, at, a, at, at hopefully all with captured within this one site, which would make the economics incredibly attractive. But to put a capital number on that at the moment is far too early to suggest that we could define, uh, you know, all the all the stages that we would need to go through at this early stage, I think is at this stage, you know, a little beyond us, but we're getting there. We'll get there very quickly. Because last time we spoke, you mentioned the construction of an ecologically sound demonstration plant that will elev elevate Empire to producer status. Is this still on track for 2025 ribbing cutting? Yeah, that, that, that's our ambition. And that's what we're working our way through. The, 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 the collaboration with CS, CSIRO and Curtin for that matter, because they also bring some of this expertise, uh, you know, in terms of processing, along with their geologists. Uh, I think that's going to accelerate our uh, our progress over the next, say, six months. Um, this is this is a, a, a technology that they are both familiar with. Um, you know, it's not like they haven't researched uh, extraction of titanium, uh, you know, in the past. So we can, you know, we can tap into that knowledge. We can utilize their facilities uh, along with other, you know, other laboratories here in, in you know, in Perth. And uh, I think we've got this great opportunity now to, you know, run these two, uh, you know, options in parallel. You know, we're not going to let the tight night slip behind. I, I think that's important. Uh, I think we have to understand the extraction of the titanite. That was our first, you know, pathway to becoming a fully integrated titanium you know producer of, of, of high quality products 
uh, the retail anatase uh, near surface is just, you know, it's a shortcut, but it's uh, and an important one. But it's, uh, you know, I believe that we need to take all of these, uh, you know, these things in our stride and come up with a with a technology that works on pretty well anything we dig out of the ground here. So you have said earlier that you're not a mineral sands producer, but is there any chance of getting a federal grant um, of a um, billion dollars, a, a low interest loan, just like the federal government granted to mineral sands producer and neighbor um, Iluca resources? Yeah, well, I couldn't comment directly on uh, on what the government, federal government may or may, uh, may be able to do in the future. We are talking to the various, you know, the, the agencies that they've set up. So there's a critical metals facility sitting out of Canberra that we've been talking to. They're very interested in what we've discovered. The, uh, you know, there's an investment, you know, a foreign investment sort of board here that 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 invests in these sort of, uh, you know, technologies in house. The German ambassador visited Australia only a few months ago, and and he was quoted as saying. You know, if Australia makes it, Germany will buy it. And I don't mean, I guess, just Germany, Europe as a whole. So, you know, they, you know, there's a huge demand for these types of critical uh, minerals, particularly titanium, the metal, to be sourced out of, you know, a reliable Western-based jurisdiction like like Western Australia. It's It's an enormous opportunity for us to become the preferred supplier to, uh, you know, to many of these uh, these major consumers now that are looking for feed outside of, to be honest, Russia and, uh, and to some extent, China. So what proprietary technology does Empire have? Proprietary? We don't hold anything at the moment. In fact, uh, you know, we'll develop our, our uh, intellectual property as we go, no doubt. But for me, that's, you know, that's... Uh, that's not going to be a, a, a very big um, incentive or, or, you know, a bonus for us, if you like, because we are unique. We could develop a, a technology to extract the titanium from this ore body. Nobody else has got an ore body, anything like this. A hydrothermal titanium ore body in a sedimentary rock, soft rock system that is the biggest thing on the planet. Well, if somebody else finds one, and wants to pinch our technology, well, good luck to them. But I, I, I doubt very much that's going to be a, be on the cards, not in the, not in the near term. So the biggest thing on the planet since commencing your maiden drill campaign in March 2023, you've completed a total of 107 drill holes. More campaigns to come, or just get going with what you've discovered. No, we, we we don't necessarily feel the urgency now to step out and drill uh, vast areas to increase the uh, you know the stocks, if you like, the, the potential ore stocks. We are uh, in the process of completing an exploration target, which will give us a range of potential tons and grades uh, that would be done in, in compliance with the you know the the 2012 Jork code, the the Australian codes. Uh, so we look forward to releasing that information. I think then people will get the, the gist of this, that, you know, you've got hundreds of years of mining here already. Where's the, where do I add most value going forward? Well, let, let's, let's set the, let's, let's get the processing pathway mapped out. Let's get the, uh, let's get everything we need to advance to this uh, demonstration plant. And then of course, uh, we, we prove we prove the efficacy of the process. We prove the quality of our product, and then we uh, then we put up, you no, know, circle the wagons and wait for everyone to store, try and storm us because you know the value that we'll add over the next thirty months is is enormous. So, if you get that proof of concept, will you apply that to your other projects with Eclipse and Walton, which are also in Western Australia? No, I don't see that as our, uh, you know, I don't see that where we'll get any real value in the short term. Uh, Walton, I still like. I mean, Walton has um, has some potential, but we're not doing a lot of work at Walton. Uh, we're doing what we need to do to maintain the license in good condition and, and uh, compliance. But uh, yeah, Walton is sort of uh, a bit of a, 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 a on a slow burn, so to speak. 
Uh, and you'd be aware we've cleaned out. Now we decided to step away from the Staveley project. We've we've dropped that. Uh, you know, at this point in time, we didn't see that was going to be a, you know, something we could manage alongside Pitfield. Um, but you know, to be honest, if uh, if a great project was suddenly to you know come within a come you know within our reach, so to speak, and it looked like it made sense, then we would con you know we'd still consider uh, you know keeping the portfolio, keeping the, the pipeline, you know, running. Many thanks. Sean Bunn, Managing Director of Empire Metals Limited. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Ah, thank you.